Hello and welcome to another episode of Go To Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Noctua fan. This time this is the NH-U9S. And this is much similar to the D9L that we looked at. Uh, but the, the design is a little bit different. This uses a, a single tower design. Uh, but same kind of footprint. It's a little bit taller than the uh, D9L. Uh, which has the 3U uh, size footprint. Whereas this one's just a little bit taller, which gives a little bit more headroom uh, in terms of cooling. So let's go ahead and take a look at this cooler and compare it against the Intel stock cooler that we're going to be putting into my HTPC. Uh, so we'll go over some of that setup here in just a minute. Okay, so uh, the reason I picked the U9S was because I wanted something that had a little bit more, uh, you know, headroom in terms of cooling. And since it is a little bit taller and the uh, design is a little bit different than the D9L, uh, it allows, you know, for better overclocking in the future if I so choose. You know, currently I, I have the i3 in there right now. Uh, but I will be doing something like the 7600K or 7700K in the future when that comes out for Kaby Lake. Uh, one thing that I found pretty impressive with this is the uh, five heat pipe design. Uh, I was surprised that they were able to cram that much into it. Uh, again, we're using the NFA9 fan. Uh, this is a 92 millimeter fan and uh, very similar to the D9L, which actually had two towers and <laughs> two towers. Um, it had the fan in the middle there, uh, but this is primarily used in a push configuration, though it does come with an extra mount for the second fan, if you so desire. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be putting this in my uh, Thermaltake F1 suppressor case. And I think it should go pretty well with something like that. You know, there's actually pretty uh, limited space in terms of height on the F1 suppressor. And this, I felt, was the best uh, bang for your buck in terms of air cooling and getting the best performance, at, you know, given the, the limited environment in there. Okay, so some of the other features of the U9S here. Uh, so it has dimensions of 95 by 95 millimeters, exactly like the D9L. So that makes life really easy in terms of compatibility with RAM. You're not going to get the fan overhanging the RAM, and you're not going to have any uh, problems in terms of, you know, the graphics card getting in the way when installing it. You know, we've got the same... Uh, you know copper base here on the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this onto my motherboard and in the HTPC and Test it against the Intel stock cooler and just for another data point We'll compare it against say, you know something as common as the Evo 212 uh, from cooler math Okay, so we're going to be using the standard fair test that I've been using on the channel for a while. A CPU stress test for thermals. And that CPU stress test that I have been using is that X264 encoder. You can find the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and get it tested and see what we get. Thank you. 
So as you can see, the Noctua NH-U9S is a very capable small form factor CPU cooler. In fact, it hangs in there very well with the ever popular uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo and even slightly outperforms it. So if you need something that, you know, is restricted in terms of height, uh, you know, anything less than 150 millimeters, you're gonna be doing really well with uh, this cooler from Noctua. I've been very impressed with their coolers overall. Um, and I'm actually gonna be doing some overclock uh, testing on this a little bit later once I have my new test bench system up and going, which will have the uh, KB Lake i5-7600K. And when I do that, I will also be testing uh, the NH-U12S. Uh, which is actually much closer related to the uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Um, so that there should be some interesting comparisons there. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of good stuff coming down the pipeline. We definitely have some KB Lake testing uh, to do with the Intel HD 630 graphics uh, versus the Intel HD 530 graphics. So we'll see what kind of performance gains we get there. Um, I'm also building a new test bench that I mentioned earlier. I'm just waiting for the Lian Lee T60B to come back in stock. That thing is really hard to find, but that is exactly what I need. Um, I also have the Gigabyte Oros uh, Gaming K7 motherboard coming. So we're going to be looking at the, uh, the Z270 chipset a little bit closer and see some of the you know, features that the, the new Oros lineup has for Gigabyte. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and we will catch you next week.